Hi there, this is a, just a quick little um, explanation. Uh, basically, the similarities and differences between uh, hyperbola and trig functions. Um, basically, I'll just start off with trig functions. Uh, the, the, the basis of trig functions is essentially the circle, which uh, I, I drew a circle here. And just remember what the equation for x squared uh, of a circle is. It's x squared plus y squared equals 1. Or equals whatever. I just, you know, that x squared plus y squared equals 1 is actually what um, is the basis for um, cosine and sine and, and tan and all these things. Um, it's the same thing. If, if you were to just focus on one component you would find like let's say if you were to focus on um, I don't know sine as you started at say like this point right here at zero degrees and you would go upward you would find that if you were to follow that point this is where you would get your sine curve and it would start off like this it start off going mm -hmm. and then it, you would see it go down and below and that's where people got like the sine curve and and actually just to give you a kind of like brief little jolt of where they're getting it it has to do with this and there was a couple um people that had messaged me to get this out so um i hope i'm answering a few of your guys' questions on essentially how trig and hyperbola functions work. Um, this is just the foundation, the basis for it. Um, and one thing that you do need to realize is that this portion right here, this can be your sign. And this portion right here, right here, that's going to be cosine. And you'll have your, and that's where the triangle comes from. And a lot of people are like, oh, well, uh, well, okay, there's the triangle. And this is what the Greeks really uh, emphasized on, circles and triangles and how they related. And um, I, I don't really enjoy going into the theory behind uh, a lot of it, but just realize that, um, you know, the Greeks, they, they, they liked triangles, they liked circles. Uh, and one way that they used to, um, they used, one way that um, has been used to kind of, um, uh, should I say, utilize their um, techniques or their, their theory is by using these sine and cosine and tangents and things like that. So, um, just realize that tangent is always based off of a circle. Now, a lot of people will say, okay, circles aren't too bad. We understand circles. We've dealt with circles our whole life. What the heck's all about this hyperbola stuff? And how can we um, just put an H at the end and run with the same terminologies? <clears throat> And I absolutely agree. It, it is a little bit bogus how they're doing it, but um, just just remember that um, there is a function that is described. Like you think of uh, when you think of sine, you're thinking um, you know opposite over adjacent, right? Or not? Sorry, opposite over hypotenuse. I should say hypotenuse. So. Um, this kind of thing is what you're thinking. And while this is pretty lo like uh, simplified, just in, in nature, like the hyperbola is less so. And they kind of have to draw it out with you in terms of, you know, just, just how the function works. But um, e to the x minus e to the negative x all over 2 and this actually if you were to um, you know you could 
you could actually lay this out and try and, and, and graph it if you wanted. Just, you know, that would be one half e to the x minus one half e to the negative x. And you'll get something, you know, along the along the effects of you know, some funky little thing that comes in and goes out like that. But realize that um, you know, if you were to say that this is zero, or not necessarily, yeah, I mean, that's zero. Just realize that um, this stuff, while you had similar situations with the sign where you couldn't really see, uh, well, I don't know where this, like, wave system was coming from, you just have to kind of understand that um, while the original trig functions were based off of the circle. This one's based off of the hyperbola. And the hyperbola's base function is right here. And I shouldn't say function, it's more like an expression, right? But, um, let me just circle these two. Um, the hyperbola is not x squared plus y squared equals 1. It's x squared minus y squared equals 1. And you get this general shape. And this general shape, um, you know, you put in any number you want, and you lie somewhere on this shape. And that's just, that's how it works. You put in anything, any x, any y, doesn't matter. You're going to change the shape of it, but um, it, it, it'll retain the same general form. It could be wider, it could be taller, it could be weird looking, but it doesn't matter. As long as you put a constant in there somewhere, um, you'll you'll get some of the, these shapes. So, um, a lot of people are sitting there going, okay, well, why are they saying sine? And I know with the circle, it's so much easier to see. You just follow the dot. Well, you know they're doing the exact same thing. They'll just they'll just connect it, and they'll say, hey, uh, this, this portion right here is, uh, this portion right here is sine, and you know this this portion this portion right here that's cosine but then they go okay well cosine sine we don't want people to get confused with trig functions let's just put an h at the end so that they know it's hyperbola so all they're doing is they're saying look for any number we get these shapes if there's a way that we can utilize these shapes in some general terminology that is familiar between all the different types of shapes, and there's actually other um, mathematicians that have found other shapes that utilize the same cosine sine, and and, and it it's um, I feel like it's redundant to know. But, um, you know, uh, these, the hyperbola and, and the circle are two pretty common ones to see. And the equation, just because the equation's so simple, I think that's probably the reason why. You know, x plus y, or x squared plus y squared equals 1, or x squared minus y squared equals 1, they're pretty simple. So, I mean, that that's your, I mean, it's really all about... Um, you know, understanding that it they someone found that these shapes, um, no matter what number you put in, uh, using these kind of functions, and, and that one, so you have your sine h x, which was equal to e x minus e negative x all over two, and then you had your cosine h, which is going to equal the same thing. You're just, uh, you know, putting your adding them together this time, rather than subtracting. And when someone found out, hey, these make a kind of cool shape. Let's toss a, let's toss a something in the air here and see if we can do some pretty fun stuff with tangents and everything. And that's how they kind of birthed, uh, you know, the whole new thing. Sine and cosine are not what should be confusing here. It's the fact that they've been able, like some mathematician, you kind of just have to take the leap of faith 
for the scope that I like to look at, you kind of just have to take a, a, a leap of faith on how they determine these. If you're going to MIT or you're going to um, Caltech, there's a few teachers over there, uh, those two schools in particular, that I know of that teachers can really, really draw it out for you and explain it. In terms of what um, the purposes of these videos, I, I believe that you kind of need to take uh, a little bit of a, a walk of faith on what they have discovered and uh, just utilize it using the Greek methodology of sine and cosines. So, if you have any more questions um, on how to utilize triangles and such uh, in, in terms of the sines and cosines, then uh, feel free to ask. Uh, if you comment on the exact video, then I can actually post a response to that video, and then it won't be an issue. So, anyway, you guys have a good night.